Hello and welcome to another Digimedia Pros tutorial. I'm your host, Marcella Lewin. Today, my guest presenter is Philip Hodgetts. Philip is a technologist, editor, industry pundit, a podcasting veteran, and has over 30 years of experience in production and post. He is the founder and creator of Intelligent Assistance Software and Lumberjack System. Philip, welcome to the Digimedia Pros tutorial series. Thank you. Glad to have you here. We've known each other for many, many years. We have, but, yeah. Yeah, we have, I know. And uh, I'm glad to have you back here uh, doing some cool tutorials for us. You're always on the bleeding edge, which is what we like about you, among other things. Sometimes that can be a, a disadvantage. If you, if you end up too far ahead of the curve, you end up out there on your own and nobody salutes you. Right, right. Or you end up blowing your system and there goes your project. Well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> now, today you're going to be showing us how to edit audio in Final Cut Pro 10. But before we do that, um, why don't you tell us what attracted you to filmmaking technology? I think like a lot of people as a, a young, well, teenager, really, I was attracted to technology in its, in and of itself. Really, I, I guess I just wanted to geek out with the, with the toys. Um, would be the most honest answer I could give that I really just wanted to play with the, the toys and it was um, it was a rude shock to realize that if you want to continue to play with the toys you better find a business model that supports your habit. Although video wasn't my first my first business I actually at the age 16 I went into a theater lighting business uh, partly because I wanted to support a church group a singing and performing group that toured in those days but also um, there was a burgeoning um, new live theater in, in the town that I grew up in, in Newcastle in Australia. And I had opportunity to present, put lighting into there and rent it and eventually got the head technician's job there. And it wasn't until I was a little bit older at 21 or 22 that I started getting into video. And then that was my first business and it's been with me ever since. I've only really worked for one other, one other employer than myself. Uh, in my entire career. That's awesome because most people would love to do that and they always have to work for somebody else. So kudos to you for doing that. It's not all positive. <laughs> Working for yourself does mean that there are no guarantees of that salary at the end of every week or month. There is no guarantee of health coverage. There are no guarantees of the niceties that an employer will give you, but it does have a lot of flexibility and freedom. And I think it makes it very much easier to transition between businesses and between the variations on a business model. But we'll talk about that then another time. Definitely, we'll talk about that. But I, I totally can relate. And uh, it requires a special personality to own your own business because, like you said, there are no guarantees. But it's fun and it does give you certain kind of freedoms. And then it also takes away a lot of other freedoms. So, but like you said, that's for another podcast. Yeah. Now, finally, for filmmakers that are struggling between their art and technology, how can they keep up with technology? Because today you can't separate the art and the technology so much. How can you keep up with the technology while still working on your craft? You do have to dedicate a certain amount of time to keeping up. Because if, if you're not actively learning new stuff, learning um, new features in software, even in the software that you use every day, you know, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro adds a whole slew of new features every year. Every time Apple updates Final Cut Pro 10, they add a slew of new features to it. And it's really hard to keep up with all of those features if you don't spend time just, just consciously taking advantage of noticing what they are so you can take advantage of them. Because I think there's nothing worse than finding that you've been doing something very inefficiently because you weren't aware of a new feature that came in, you know, two reiterations ago or two releases ago because you were busy doing something. Stephen Covey calls the habit sharpening the saw. So if you don't take the time to sharpen your saw to, to become more adept with the tools that you already use, and also to start using the tools that you don't currently use because times will change. Five years ago, six years ago, hardly anyone used Premiere Pro professionally. Now it's well established in certain sections of the industry and, and you know, chipping at, at Avid's Media Composer heels in, in some ways. So if you don't keep growing, you start dying. And I think that's not just professionally, but that's, a, that's something about uh, the human condition, I believe. I agree completely with you. And I know we're going to be doing a podcast specifically on reinventing yourself. So we'll leave that for next time. I know you're ready to do this cool tutorial, so I'm going to pass it on to you. I'm going to go on mute here. If I have any questions, I'll jump in. I know I've got Final Cut Pro 10 up, and most people think of Final Cut Pro 10 as a as a uh, video editing app. But I found that it's a very adept audio editing app, and I'd like to show you two ways that uh, I can edit. This is a two person interview. It's a podcast that I do with Terry Curran called the Terrence and Phillips Show. We record this, and I get I either get it as individual files, but for the purpose of this demo, I have a stereo file as well, uh, where Terry's in the left and I am in the right. 
The first thing we need to do when we have this type of stereo file is we need to convert it to, final, to um, dual mono. And in Final Cut Pro 10, we make sure the track that we want is selected. We open up the inspector. Uh, in the audio tab in the inspector, we can change this stereo into dual mono. And when we see that redraw, we can see we, that one track has got Terry in it and the other track has got Philip. And I can, I can name these roles because these are actually components. And so in Final Cut Pro 10, I can actually name the components. So I can Terry and Philip. So now when I put this into the timeline, these will show up as the as Terence and Philip as our, um, our names rather than just track one on left and right. Um, so I'm going to put that into the into a uh, project, which is the Final Cut Pro 10 term for a timeline, and I've dropped it in there. I'm going to boost the level up, and what I want to do here is I want to first of all show the audio components. I'm not going to zoom out, but I just want to get near the front so I don't know where I'm going. Um, and so I just right click here and expand audio components will show you all of the individual uh, components that make it up and in this case we have two components the Terry component and the Philip component so if I I'm going to boost them up a little bit just to get the levels up so we can hear a bit better so oh. I've got For like 44 hours Oh, and the, yeah, well, yeah, but you, they overheat or whatever. I remember they re-ran. No, no, the NX7's overheat. Oh, that was Not the NX. NX. So anyway, we have, we have that. Now, um, of course, one of the lovely features that I, I find in Final Cut Pro 10 is the trim head and trim tail feature. And I'm going to come back to the moment, but I'm going to just simply get to this point here and go option, left square bracket. And left square option, left square bracket will trim to the current playhead position. Uh, and so we have both pieces uh, trimmed up at once. Uh, cooler on them. Oh, I got the can of Queenston Freeze, but it's, oh, yeah. Yeah, you can hardly bring that out. And... So we're not right yet at the beginning. So we just need to find where I'm. So that's far more valuable. I, I go to that, and I know what's going to be at NAB two years from now. Right. Is the bottom line. So it's kind of why am I, you know, wasting the time? And... and what I don't want here is I don't want Philip in there. So I can do a number of things at this point. So if I, I want to show this trim here. I don't really want to cut to Philip. I want to take my audio down at this point. And so I'm just going to drag a range out. I'm in my, I don't even have to be in the range tool and I can take the audio down or, and you'll notice that Final Cut Pro 10 here automatically creates fade handles when we adjust the level between uh, in, a, in a range. But I can also, without having to do all that, I can just go delete and it deletes out that component for that range. So now we have Terry clean. Sure, registration's free. But you're paying for hotel rooms and food in Vegas is not cheap and you know et cetera et cetera. It's it's not. So it keeps you a cleaner signal to take out the the person that's not on on uh, the active microphone at any point in time, and leaves the the rest yeah. untouched. So. Um, I really. And um, you know, like all of us, Terry has a tendency to to go um, and we all don't really want that in our presentation. So There's I'm just going to go. Here, I'm just going to take that arm out and I'm going to create Command B. Command B will add a blade through all the track. Now, in order to do this in Soundtrack Pro, I would have to go blade both That's tracks. Done. I would then have to go forward and blade the tracks again, then select the two clips and delete them because they're in, in Soundtrack Pro, there's no lift function. At least in an NLE, you could lift it and close up the gap. But in Final Cut Pro 10, all I need to do, in, instead of nine keystrokes, um. I just wait for that and go option left square bracket and I not only have has it taken out that little bit, it's closed it up because the magnetic timeline automatically closes up all gaps. And so that's just gone. So I really you might want to close I might want to tidy that up in if I was doing this properly I would uh, pick a little moment before that breath. And that's really the basics of editing audio in Final Cut Pro 10 in a stereo track. That's one way of doing this. You just proceed on swapping deleting out the clip, the, the speaker that you don't want to be active or hide, uh, and using that command B, play forward, option left square bracket to trim that out, and that closes up automatically. So that's one way of editing audio in Final Cut Pro 10.
Now, I have a question for you, Philip. So do you, after you do your editing, do you also do any kind of normalization or hard limiter on this? I don't because I get the audio files from the audio folks at uh, Curtis at um, Alpha. And they're already fixed for you. And they're, they're already set up. They, they pushed up the level. I'm not sure why in making this into a stereo, um, as I said, I normally get these as, as single audio, uh, mono audio files. For the purpose of the demonstration, we used Wave Agent to create a stereo file which seems to have dropped the levels and it, right. in, a so in, I, <laughs> in a way that in I wouldn't here, expect. You normally use it for basically cutting up and, and getting rid of stuff, but not really for normalizing and, no. and doing any kind of sound design with it. No, no. So let me just get rid of this out of my timeline. And instead, I'm going to do a multicam version. Um, and this is a multicam version. I'm going to push Shift Command 7 to bring up the multicam angle editor. One, it's one important thing in Final Cut Pro, if you're making uh, audio or multicams of any kind, I find it's very valuable to assign a camera angle. You can do it here or you can go into your info and assign the camera angle in the info. There are times, and I'm pretty sure on this one where there's just two very long recordings that Final Cut Pro 10 would match it up automatically, but I do find um, with my GoPros or things like that where there are multiple audio, multiple recordings making up the the, each angle, that it can cause uh, some misalignment if you don't assign an angle. But the sh and you know you can still collect, select eight or ten items and assign an angle all at once. Having assigned the angle, and I then sort of selected both both angles, make a new multicam, and let it make the multicam based on audio. Uh, and this is the resulting multicam clip. And you can't switch multicams until they're in a timeline. And so again, I'm going to put that into the timeline and come back right to the head. And so we've got, <laughs> now we've got the same timeline, but this time we've got switched angles uh, instead of using the two stereo angles. So I mean, we could show the components, but there is only going to be one component because there is only one audio angle active at any given point in time. Um, I've got this set here to make sure that we are on audio only mode because we don't we don't really have any vision to cut whenever it's defaulting to assuming that there's vision for channel one and that we're using channel uh, angle one as well as the video but I'm only going to be working with audio and ignoring the video meaning of course that I will take this out um, later um, and order, export only audio so if I'm going to do that command left square bracket to bring it up to here again and <laughs> And we're still getting set up here. <laughs> my laugh is very loud. It's, um, I'm known for my laugh, and I'd rather be known for my laugh than known because I, I'm always a sourpuss, so I don't mind. <laughs> okay, so we're back in about here somewhere. So option left square bracket. Um, want to start with Terry, so I would show. Like the, the recordings on the H1 that we use for lunch and everything. You can only... I think I've got 32 gig cards in there. You can only record for like 44 hours. So um, if I need to go to Terry at that point, I've swapped around the opposite way than they were in my, in my other example. I only just have to switch, hit two on the keyboard, and now we're getting Terry. Oh, and uh, yeah. Well, yeah, but you, they overheat or whatever. I remember they re it, no, what no, we were doing. That's, uh, and then I come back to me, um, switching it back to camera angle one. Now, if I wanted to overlap and get a little bit of smoother transition there, rather than just the cut. No, no, the NEX7's over here. So Terry does continue on there. It'll be nice to hear a little bit more of him. So I open up just a double click on the uh, audio com track, component, whatever area, uh, waveform. And now I've got these, uh, the audio tracks and the video tracks separate so I can, in my timeline, so I can change that. So I can uh, expand Terry just to come a little bit further on and we can see from the the waveform down here that Terry continues on. Heat or whatever, I remember they re-ran. No, no, we the NEX7's getting... overheat, but not the... And so we can smooth that transition out. And the other thing that we can do easily in Final Cut Pro 10 to smooth it even further is a little fade handle, uh, rather than having to set key uh, frames or points to set a, a fade out. Really, th this is the simplest thing in the world. Just play through here, switching, hitting the one key or the two key, depending which person you want to go to, um, switching backwards and forwards. So the only the, the really the close mic is active at any point in time, and that leaves the 
the off microphone sounds, the reverberant sounds are out of it so it sounds cleaner, except for where I want to do that overlap. And, and truthfully, that's really um, the simplest way of doing anything in Final Cut Pro 10. I mean, if we want to cater a little bit out, we've got the same thing. We can just blade it and play through and, and take out, use the optional left square or right square brackets, and that works just as well. Of course, if you only have a, an audio track selected, it's only going to work on the audio track. So I really, to, in order to do that, I should have closed that back up and trimmed it that way. Or I could have bladed and deleted it, but I find just things in the left and right square brackets that, to me, speed this process up so fast just for taking out those ums and ahs because, you know, if I want to take out, yeah. Yeah. Take out my yeah there, I just command B, play, yeah. option left square bracket, done. And that's the equivalent of nine keystrokes or seven keystrokes in a in an audio editor or, or less um, less modern um, NLE. And really, that's it. And we show you that when you output, you output audio only rather than output audio and video, and and we're done. That's tr editing audio in Final Cut Pro 10. As I said, it's very straightforward. It's the fastest audio editor I've ever used. And then you go ahead and export just audio only, basically. Yeah, I do the sharing, which is what Final Cut calls export. Right. Master file settings. Like an AIF or something. Yeah, and it's audio only for that. And, right, right, uh, okay. And, and it, well, it, we can also export WAVs and um, compressed audio right. as well. Well, Philip, I really want to thank you for showing us how to edit audio in... Final Cut Pro 10 seems pretty simple enough. I really appreciate it. No problem at all. Now, if people want to get a hold of you or learn more about you, what should they do? My blog is at philiphodgetts.com, and that's sort of the central place where I announce what's going on in my life. We, we do um, the food show the, and the Terence and Philip show and other things that we and there and the lunch series. And we're also uh, intelligentassistance.com is for the uh, workflow software for Final Cut Pro 10 Premier and Premiere Pro and Final Cut Classic. And... Lumberjack System is our, our blogging and pre-editing tool for Final Cut Pro 10, and uh, that's pretty exciting for me at the moment too. Cool, you've got a lot of stuff going on with you. Well, Philip, thanks again, and to the rest of you, please remember to check out more of our tutorials, videos, podcasts, and articles at digimediapros.com. So until the next tutorial, I'm your host, Marcelo Lewin. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.